So King Saul had become jealous of David. So when they came home from David fighting Goliath, the newest, greatest hit in Israel was Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. But it was not so great a hit with King Saul. He did not like it. And as time went on, his heart just became filled with jealousy and hatred. And he became just outrageous. And he was obsessed with killing David. His whole purpose, all he cared about was killing David. And he tried to kill him multiple times. And David said, there is but a step between me and death. And so David eventually had to run. He couldn't stay at the palace. He couldn't go back home to Bethlehem. Couldn't go to Samuel. Couldn't stay at the tabernacle. He had nowhere to go. But we see in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1, he escaped to the cave of Dullam. And then we see in verse 2, this is a beautiful verse. It says, And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and they were with him about 400 men. So here we have the Lord's anointed, the future king, has left his home, and he has no place to lay his head. So what is so beautiful about that? So it's beautiful when you look past David and you see Jesus. He is the Lord's anointed, the future king of kings. He had left his home in heaven, and he came down to this world, and he hath no place to lay his head. He said, The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So David is in this cave, and these 400 men came and gathered themselves to him. So we have a king here in a cave in whom the future hopes of the people depend on. But he is despised and rejected, but he's gathering people to him, waiting on the day until his glory will be revealed. So does that sound familiar? So Jesus is the king on whom the future hopes of all mankind depends on, who is and was despised and rejected, and who he is gathering the people unto him, waiting on the day when his glory will be revealed. So who were they that came to David? It was everyone that was in distress, everyone that was discontented, and everyone that was in debt. So who are the ones that Jesus is calling unto him today? It's everyone that is in distress, everyone that is discontented, and everyone that is in debt. So let's look at those three groups of people. So in distress, so when the Israelites told Samuel they wanted a king, God said, listen to them. Give them a king. He said, but show them what their king will be like. Y'all remember this chapter? So chapter 8, starting in verse 11. He said, this is what your king will be like. He said, he will take your sons and appoint them for himself, to, for his chariots, to be his horsemen, to reap his harvest. He'll take your daughters to be confectionaries, to be cooks, to be bakers. He will take your fields, your vineyards, your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your seed and give them to his servants. He will take your men servants, your maid servants, your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and you shall be his servants. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you have chosen, and the Lord will not hear you. But the people refused to listen, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us. So that's what they wanted, and that's what they got. So can you imagine being at home? There's a knock on the door, and you open the door, and it's King Saul's people. And they say, how many sons are in this house? How many sons do you have? And they say, two. And they say, they're coming with us. They belong to King Saul now. One will drive his chariots and one will reap his harvest. Then a week later, knock on the door. You come to the door. They say, how many daughters do you have? And you say, one. And they say, she's coming with us. She's going to cook in the palace. King Saul's tired of ram pudding. He's wanting a pineapple upside down cake. She's going to cook it for him. And then, so you've worked so hard, you've worked for months, planting, plowing in your fields, working in your vineyard, your olive yard, now it's time for harvest. You finally get to reap what you've sown, and then knock on the door. It's the same men. And they say, this field over here, it looks like it's done really good this year. Your vineyard over here has done good. Well, now they belong to King Saul. And they say, and also, he requires a tenth of what you made in your other fields. He, uh, he wants your donkeys, a tenth of your sheep. And go ahead and have your servants gather it all up and bring it to the palace because he's keeping them too. So you can see why these people would be in distress. And so they ran to David. They believed that he could help them. And so there are so many causes of distress in the world today. You know, you've got financial problems, problems at work, problems at home, problems at church, uh, loneliness, temptations from the devil, and sickness. So remember in the Bible, 
there was a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus. He had a 12-year-old little girl at home, and she was sick, and she was about to die. And he came to Jesus and fell at his feet. And he said, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Please come and lay your hand on her so she may be healed. And as they went, somebody came from the house and told him that she had died. Jesus kept going. He went in there. He took her by the hand. He said, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And she arose and walked. So most of those other religious rulers, they rejected Jesus. They despised him. But Jairus was in distress, and he knew where to go to. So I think, you know, we've all been through this, and I think that is the greatest distress that we can face in this world is when someone that we love is sick. And so it's like your heart is just totally broken in two. But Psalm 147, verse 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. So he will eventually give you a peace that passes all understanding. And so no matter what is the cause of your distress, come to Jesus. So David, when he was in that cave, he was in distress. Psalm 142, 4, he wrote it from the cave. He said, I looked on my right hand and beheld, and there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. But look at what he wrote in Psalm 18, 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. So everyone that is in distress, come to Jesus. He's a, if you need a friend, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's our provider, our healer. He's the counselor. He's our escape out of temptation. And he's the prince of peace. He will give you peace in distress. And then so everyone that was discontented came to David. And so King Saul, he had started out with God. God was with him. The Spirit of God was on him. He had Samuel by his side. But then we know Saul turned back from following God. He rebelled against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David and departed from Saul. And so I think the people could see this because David went in and out before the people and it said all the people in Israel and Judah loved him. And so I think they could tell that Saul was no longer following God and God was no longer with Saul, but he was with David. And so the greatest discontentment that we will face in life as a Christian is when we are not serving the Lord and we're out living in the world. And so these people... They were tired of being under somebody that was not with God. And they went to David because the Lord was with him. And so remember the prodigal son. He went to his father. He got his inheritance. He went out into a far country. Wasted everything he had. And then it said there was a famine. And he began to be in want. So he was discontent. And he thought back to his father's house. And then he got a job feeding pigs. And he wanted to eat the pig's food. But nobody would even give him that. But then it says he came to himself. And he said, I will arise and go to my father. So if we've been rolling around in the hog pen, hog pen of sin and we're discontented, we need to say that. I will arise and go to my Father and say what he said. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. And what will he do? Just like the Father did through the prodigal son. He'll have compassion on us, put his arms around us, and take us back in. And we're, we'll restore unto us the joy of our salvation, like David prayed one time. So everyone that is discontented, Come to Jesus. He will restore and give you joy. And then the third group of people, everyone that was in debt. And so we can see why they would be in debt. Because King Saul took their children, their fields, their vineyards, their animals, their servants, their food, took everything. And so they went to David because they had faith that he could help them. And so when you get accepted into pharmacy school, they sign you up with a loan to pay for your school, to give you money to live on. And so... I ate out all the time, I went shopping all the time, I bought the kids like game systems, basketball goals, brought them home to them on the weekends, I had all kinds of free money, you know, that's what I called it, my free money. So then I graduated and I got my first bill, my first bill for my loan, and I realized it was not free money. And then I got on there and looked and saw how much I owed, and I was like, I am in debt, big time. And so I realized I was in debt, but I have never lost one night's sleep over that debt, never shed one tear over that debt. But then one time, there was someone told me that I was in another kind of debt, and that was debt to sin. And the Holy Spirit convicted me and showed me that I was lost, and I had sinned, and because of my sin, I owed a debt to God. And I would lay there at night and cry, and I could not sleep, And then, but then the Holy Spirit showed me, a savior. He showed me Jesus, one that loved me so much that he went to the cross, took on my sins, and died in my place, and paid the debt for me. And all I had to do was come to him. And so like those men went to David, they had faith he could help them. I was standing probably like right up here that night, and just felt that burden, that guilt, and that 
the guilt of the debt that I owed, and then I stepped out by faith, and I went to Jesus, believing that he could help me. And so one of the last things that Jesus said on the cross was, it is finished. And that is from the Greek word to telestai, which means paid in full. And so he was telling us there on the cross that he had taken our sins, he'd suffered every punishment for them, and he had shed his blood. And so now our debt to sin was paid in full. And all you have to do is come and claim it. Claim that Jesus is your Savior and he's paid your debt. And that verse said, those 400 men came to David and he became captain over them. And who does the Bible say Jesus is? He's the captain of our salvation. And so look at Jesus. He came into this world and before he was even born, they told him there was no room for you here. Mary went to Bethlehem. And she had to have him in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn. He grew up. He had nowhere to lay his head. They kicked him out of his own city in Nazareth. The chief priests, scribes, elders despised him. They planned how they might kill him. The people rejected him. They cried out, crucify him. And so the world rejected him. And the world is still rejecting him today. And so we are living in the days of his rejection. But just like he did when he was in the world, Jesus is calling out of this world a people for his name. And he's calling out those that are in distress, those that are discontented, and those that are in debt. And one day, his glory, just like David, one day David's glory was revealed and he was king. And so one day, Jesus' glory will be revealed as king of kings and lord of lords. And the Bible says, every eye shall see him, and they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. So you better make sure he is your captain today, because one day he is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so everyone that's in distress, discontented, and everyone that is in debt, come to Jesus. So just like David said, there is but a step between me and death. There is just but a step between you and Jesus.